On February the 17th, that Sunday afternoon at around 10 p.m., police arrived and found 24-year-old Marcus Drummer suffering from life-threatening injuries at the Edgewater Trace Apartments right off Abercorn. That apartment complex is right by a hotel right across the street from another apartment complex. Now, Mr. Drummer was shot and killed, and he was originally a student at Savannah State, and he was also originally from Atlanta. He wasn't from Savannah. And I come to figure out later on, well, the news articles won't tell you this, but it turns out that this was somewhat drug related because dude was a weed man. I come to figure that out later on and that pretty much the situation that took place. I don't know the whole details about what happened, but basically uh, he had some tree, he had some weed, and I'm not so sure if he was in the middle of making a play and, you know, he got killed. But, you know, this is pretty much a typical, pretty much the most typical crime that you can think of when it comes to murder. You know, somebody tries to set up and rob the drug dealer, you know, the drug dealer bucks and end up getting shot because that what happened. You know, he end up, you know, he knew that he was about to get robbed, but he end up bucking, you know, refused to get robbed and, you know, end up getting shot and killed. So, uh, you know, rest in peace to the young brother, Mr. Drummer. You know, a lot of people... That's not from Savannah, even from Atlanta. You know, a lot of people that come here and they just think, I think they come under here under the wrong qualifications, thinking that, okay, well, I'm not from here. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from this place. I'm from out of town. You know, people going to show me love because I come from a different place. You know, no, that's not true. You know, that's definitely not true. And, you know, people will take you off for $50, $40, $30 worth of weed. So, um, any more information? about his homicide, I'll let y'all know and keep y'all updated as well. And also last week on Saturday at around 7 p.m. in the parking lot of Sam's Club in Pula, Georgia, there was a shooting of Quana Lee, who was 22 years old. Now, she was actually shot on Saturday, but she died on Sunday. Now, police say three people were involved with her death after she was gunned down in the parking lot of the Sam's Club. Now, after when that shooting happened, there was an active police officer, a pool of police officer that was literally close by when that shooting happened. So the police car actually ended up chasing the suspects all the way in Windsor Forest. You know, and that's a pretty long drive to actually follow somebody from Pula to Windsor. You know, we're talking about the way other side of town. But also police believe that this shooting is related to another shooting that happened a day prior to this incident that injured a 10 year old girl that Friday morning in Effingham County and is connected to you know this shooting and that 10 year old girl was shot at around 4 a.m. on Burnt Tree Drive that Friday morning in Effingham and they also believe that the victim from Saturday night shooting in Pooler is believed to have been the target of Friday shooting now they also arrested Sierra and DeAndre Mims in a home in Riverdale Georgia just yesterday, Thursday, they were arrested by U.S. Marshals. Now, both of the suspects are charged with aggravated assault, conspiracy to commit murder, and murder. And also, along with the third suspect, Wanda Butler, who was already in custody, investigators say that she is cousins with the Sims. And also, what they're saying about this shooting is that this stemmed from issues from over a year ago. And more information about this is that Miss Quaniqua Lee, hopefully I'm saying her name right, is the sister of George Atkins Jr. If you don't remember that video that I've done two years ago, the kid that was killed outside of McDonald's. He wasn't killed inside McDonald's, but he was killed outside of McDonald's, but he ended up walking inside you know, to get help, but he ended up dying inside of McDonald's. But he was killed in McDonald's back in 2017 on Abercorn, you know, on the south side. So, I mean... You know, just picture one family losing a daughter and a son within a spurt of two years, really less than two years. So, you know, really tragic situation of somebody that could commit a horrendous crime. And not only that, but, you know, they're pretty much killing the, the family line. So, I mean, I'm not so sure how the family is taking this. I'm pretty sure it's, it's devastating. You know, you know, and it's like this in Savannah. You know, there are families that do suffer from gun violence. You know, there are plenty of families in Savannah that 
just have a history of you know their siblings dying and suffering from from gunshots, you know, from gun violence. And also in my next piece of news, two men involved in the killing of Savannah native and Mercer University basketball player Jabri Bryan have been sentenced to prison. Damian Henderson was sentenced to 40 years in his role in the, in the 2016 shooting. Uh, Jarvis Miller Sr. was sentenced to 15 years. Uh, Brian was killed during a drug deal in Macon three years ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put that video in the link in the description as well because I covered that video separately. Um, you know, it was, you know, pretty much Jabri Bryan was trying to buy some Xanax, but ended up being fake and he ended up getting killed by these two dudes. Um, I, I'll put that video in the link in the description just in case if you haven't seen that video. I don't want to really too much reiterate the things that I said in that video, but at least the people that were responsible for his death are now sitting in prison. And then my last piece of news, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers discovered a shipment that originated from Cartagena, Colombia last November in 2018, but just announced the findings on February the 22nd, that Friday, and they found a whopping 1,157 pounds of cocaine with the estimated street value of over 19 million dollars. Officers say that 450 packages of cocaine uh, were hidden within a shipment of fresh pineapples. And be honest with you, I'm not even really surprised. I mean, I see the cartels down there in uh, South America doing all types of stuff to get their product to America. I mean, I seen them put them in soaps. I seen them put them in bananas. You know, I seen them put it in, you know, roach spray cans. I mean, I seen pretty much everything that that's possible. You know, anything that's possible that the cartels can do, they're pretty much they can put their mind to it. Um, but the thing is, is that you know, the dope that was found. You know, I really don't believe that not even a quarter of that would have hit the Savannah streets. Cause you gotta look at it this way: Savannah is a hub city. It's a support city. So uh, there's a lot of other things that comes through the city. It comes through the port of Savannah, through the ocean, uh, through the rivers. And I just look at it as just a, a travel destination where people might just want to pick it up from Savannah and distribute it other places. So, I mean, if even if they didn't caught this much amount of cocaine on the streets, I mean, I doubt that a quarter of it would have went to would have went to anybody in Savannah because, I mean, you got a lot of other places in the South that have a, a greater cocaine presence. And I don't see the dope game going out of style anytime soon when you can find over a thousand pounds of cocaine, you know, on the port. You know, I don't feel like uh, the drug war has been won. I mean, it's been fought for a long time you know, nationwide, but, I mean, the drug war, man, I mean, this has been going on since before I was born, and pretty much whenever I die, whether it's 50 years from now, 80 years from now, it'll still be going, man, and it's going to be at bigger amounts. But that's all the updates for the month of February. I know I kind of had to compile all the news for one month because I took a month off, you know, and that's important, too. You know, sometimes you have to take some time off to just refresh your mindset and realize what you came into YouTube to do and you know I don't I never forget that you know what I come into YouTube to do make people understand what's going on in the community and make people more knowledgeable of what's going on but as for me I'm out of here man I got a few more videos I got to upload today you know I've been I had a lot of time off so I'm just trying to play catch up right now but any other updates for anything that I talk about in this video, I'll let y'all know as well. But that's it, man. Stay blessed.